I am Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in New York at the iShares Connect Conference. And I'm here with Linda Zhang, who's head of research in Windhaven Investment Management. Linda, thanks for being with us, appreciate Tom, it. Tom, thank you for having me. Listen, I know you're an old pro, and you've been at this for a long time, but it's really, really important as an ETF strategist to understand all the tools that are available. And for the average advisor out there, they don't necessarily have the research. So tell us a little bit about what Windhaven does for advisors. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I know ETF strategies is well accepted term in ETF ecosystem. Uh, we like to see ourselves. We're asset managers, period. We are global multi-asset managers who help our clients uh, invest money globally across global equities, fixed income, currencies, and commodities. So we manage 57,000 separate management accounts, oh my gosh. as well as some multi-hundred million large institutional accounts. So that's what we do. And within and the portfolios that you manage, your tool of choice is ETFs, is that right? Absolutely. We are, our founder, Steve Cucchiaro, he was an early adopter of ETFs back in 1990s. Wow. And we still remain 100% ETF in terms of implementation vehicles. So with the markets today, tell us a little bit about your view. There's some great opportunities, but also some challenges. Sure, uh, perhaps we can start from, uh, from equities. Um, uh, one of the challenges for equities or for any asset classes is potential rising interest rates. Right. And, uh, but we want to remind people there are two points we want to make in terms of how you think about equity strategies in potential rising rate environment. First of all, uh, equities have different rate sensitivities. Right. Um, you know, companies that tend to rely on debt financing, such as utility companies, mm -hmm. they tend to get hurt more. So those companies tend to reside or tend to be more concentrated in low vol ETFs, for example. Yeah. And there are also other companies that pay super high dividends. Uh, and they tend to get hurt more because this fixed income like cash flow nature. Right. So I think if rising rate is your primary concern, maybe you want to moderate your exposure to low vol ETFs and, and perhaps those super rich dividend paying ETFs. So what you're pointing out is rising rates not only can affect the fixed income market, but can affect the equity markets as well. Is that Abs right? Absolutely. And sometimes people forget that. Yeah. And my other point of uh, rising interest rate uh, you know, we live in the U.S., we watch yeah. U.S. news, yeah. so U.S. Re rising, it doesn't necessarily mean rates are rising elsewhere. Uh -huh. uh, you mean, look at last year, 10-year rate has risen from 1.6% you know, at one point, all the way up to up, shoot up about 3% at the end of the year, so rate has ri risen, yeah. um, the, um, but it has a lot to do with anticipation uh, Fed is going to reduce its monetary stimulus program. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at Bank of Japan and other central banks, Bank of Japan only started a QE last year, right. early 2013, and ECB, European Central Bank, they haven't, they haven't started doing it. They're still right. contemplating about it. So in our view, um, you know, there are parts of the world where interest rate may continue to stay low, which will be uh, very stimulative to yeah. uh, uh, financial assets, including equities. So uh, all central banks are not created equal, and they all doing things differently. And again, being a global manor, you, manager, you pick up on these opportunities. We do. We yeah. are some, some people accuse of us of central bank watchers. <laughs> well, well, that's great. <laughs> and uh, we have had a long tradition of doing that because yeah. their policies really influence the, the global credit conditions, the global monetary conditions. Um, and talking about other central banks, the G7 world, uh, they're not the only one with central banks, right? Yeah. We also watch what Central Bank of Brazil is doing, what P PBOC, People's Bank of China is doing. Yeah. And those emerging, large emerging markets have had challenges with their economic growth. So at some point, they may even consider uh, uh, starting their stimulative sure. programs. So in a nutshell, the idea is uh, Central Bank has a stimulus program uh, good for bonds in those areas, correct? And possibly good for equities, which yes. brings us to one of your favorite discussions, which is emerging markets and frontier markets. Tell us briefly where you see and why you see opportunities That's right. there. Uh, in the traditional large emerging markets, we see great valuation, uh, number one. And um, when, when you look at uh, China, Brazil, Russia, uh, they are all trading at 
ridiculously low uh, discount, valuation yeah. discount relative to developed um, equity as a whole. Yeah. China currently is trading at just a little over half um, in terms of relative valuation to developed world. And this was last seen back in 2000s. Uh, it, 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 we saw that probably for a good reason. Uh, the economic slowdown, uh, the potential banking problems, uh, they, they, they're huge headwinds. Yeah. Um, and in, in Brazil, it's still very cheap. And Russia, due to uh, the political, uh, geopolitical uncertainties there, their relative valuation, when I checked that last night, I, 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 was, I was surprised. I knew it was low. It's now trading at 27%, which means 77 discount to developed equity world. Wow. And whenever we saw a valuation of such yeah. discount, this, this could be a turning point. You know, obviously, valuation is not the only tool yeah. uh, we, we monitor, uh, the only thing we monitor. We are looking for, we're looking and waiting to see the catalysts. Yeah. What's going to turn around the sentiment of investors? So, valuation becomes not a value trap anymore. Yeah. Things like structural changes in China, the change in economic drivers. Yeah. The old versus new, the old in the the, the, the bank, the banking sectors, the the, the, um, the oil sectors, steel sectors, to the new, yeah. the telecom, the e-commerce, uh, the, the Best Buy's equivalent. Yeah. So um, you're able to do all this research and then when you drill down to see an area of opportunity, there's pretty much an ETF or a choice of absolutely. ETFs for that. Right? Absolutely. We, um, there are tons of ETFs that can ga gain you exposure to what we call traditional yeah. uh, emerging markets, which are dominated by the BRICS, right? Uh, but we also look for opportunities uh, that beyond the BRICS. Yeah. What's the next opportunities? Yeah. Linda, this has been great. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.